Indeed, you are a shield for me, my glory. Thank God we are all favored. This is the first Sunday on, in the month of June, and I joyfully welcome you to what promises to be another exciting edition of Christian Connect on ETV Ghana. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17 says, O Lord God, you yourself made the heavens and earth by your great power and with your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. Indeed, beloved, the one who made heaven and the earth, nothing is too difficult for him. So whatever situation you find yourself today or now, just go to him, having the confidence that nothing is too hard or too difficult for our God. It's always a great delight to come your way with Christian Connect every Sunday at midday. Uh, my name is Paul Anuma Kodia. Let me say thank you to Osasio Fashion for providing my outfit. You can always check out some of the beautiful designs Osasio Fashion has on Facebook and on Instagram. You can give them a call on 0243-663-884. Osasio Fashion says, style your occasion. And to our topic for today, and Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I'll, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Very, very comfortable, uh, comfortable words from our Lord himself. But the focus is on the first part, fear not. What is it about fear that the Bible consistently tell us not to be afraid? Because some scholars even say that there are about 365 fear nots in the Bible. Today on Christian Connect, we will be looking at how to overcome fear. So stay with us because we have great men of God to help us in our discussion. This is Christian Connect on ETV Ghana, and today we are looking at how to overcome um, fear. And to help us do that is Pastor uh, Kelvin Fru, and he is the Fru uh, podcast. Kelvin, welcome. Thank you very How much. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank Great you. to have you on the show. Yes. And also to help us today is uh, Pastor Blessing Asun Ligon, and he is the founder of Agent of Change and the vice president for the uh, Floodgate um, uh, chapter of the Full Gospel Businessmen's uh, Fellowship. Uh, Pastor Blessing, welcome. Thank you very and much. And let me say that Pastor Blessing is also a, 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 a fan of Christian Connect. Thank you so much for the feedback. We sincerely appreciate it anytime he's giving us feedback. So today we are looking at fear or how to overcome fear. Let me start with you, uh, Pastor Blessing. Um, what is fear? <laughs> Thank you very much. That's an interesting question. Uh, fear is a negative emotion, but it, that is triggered by impending danger it's a negative emotion and there is a spirit behind it the bible says in first second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 that god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. so fear is a spirit and its intention is to destroy people's life mm -hmm. so if if, uh, if there is uh, that fear that okay his intention is to destroy people's life is also a spirit and as you say an impending danger mm. then we have to be afraid isn't it <laughs> <laughs> not not exactly now there is a an element of fear in the life of everybody you know when you are trying to achieve great things you'll be afraid but in the midst of that fear you need to be courageous to continue to take step irrespective of the fear that is confronting you. Fear is not of God. Mm. Fear is not of God. So let me come to you, uh, Fruz. Um, we, we, uh, Pastor Blessing has told us, um, as, and as he quoted, uh, is a spirit. Yeah. Because God himself says, I have not given you that spirit. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if it's a spirit, um, then like I said, we need to be afraid of it, isn't it? Well, it depends. It depends where, where one stands. I think uh, when it comes to fear, it's about 
individuality, what you're facing in life will determine what you should fear. Because we, we have all kinds of things we do face in life and uh, you don't expect somebody who is driving and portable, well, I was told that is a pothole there and will have the same fear as falling off a tall building. Mm -hmm. So I think it's all about in, uh, individuality and also your personal experience. But to me, I think fear is a, is a natural thing. Fear is natural, but yet a very powerful emotions uh, that is triggered by, by threats in your mind. You, you feel threatened, so there is a fear. And fear could be good and it could be bad in, in different cases. So sometimes you fear for defense and sometimes you fear to take a flight, to run. So it's a two things. So it depends on what an individual is going through in life, that the time is the kind of fear they should have. But then in all conclusion or in that conversation, I would still like to say that fear is still something that is not good for either a believer or anyone in the world to, to accommodate, to accept as a friend in their, in their life and want to and want to just joke around that, uh, that feeling of it's okay to fear. Mm -hmm. I think it's not okay to fear, but then we all have fear. Mm. It's, it's, it's not okay to fear, <laughs> but we, we all have fear. Yeah, we all have fear. Uh, so uh, how does fear manifest itself? Um, if somebody is walking, would you, can you say that, okay, this person is, is facing some kind of fear? Okay, I, I, would say, I would say fear is, uh, is one of the seven senses that God has given to man in this universe. And, and fear is there, like I said earlier, fear is there as a defense. So when you're taking a walk or you're walking and then you feel this person fear, what is around them? What are they fearful of? What is happening at that moment? Because it's all about, it's all about what is happening at that moment that determines if this person is really fearful or they have to, to fear. Hmm. Because we need to understand, fear as well is like a shield. It's in our mind and, and, there's, a, and there's an immune in our mind that, that triggers this idea of you need to take a defense. You need to run away from here. So that's why he said it's okay to have fear. We all have fear. But how you're able to accommodate it is what really is a problem here. Pastor Blessing, what, what causes fear? What causes people to be afraid? Uh, yeah, thank you very much for that question. There are a number of causes. Number one is negative experience. What you have experienced in the past can cause you fear. Take, for example, somebody who is learning how to drive and he had a crash. The fear of driving will be on the person. So anytime the person picked a car or is trying to drive, when they remember the accident of yesterday, it will create some kind of fear. So negative experience causes fear. Another thing that causes fear is lack of control or power over the outcome of a thing can cause fear. For example, when you notice that there is an intending danger, maybe the doctor has diagnosed that you are the, somebody is uh, is diagnosed of an incurable disease mm -hmm. it already creates fear the person will begin to fear that the fear of death the fear of am i going to survive this so because the person has no control over that event it will create a form of fear so there are quite a number of things but mm -hmm. for now let me hold on but to yeah this. yes so but then let me also um take it on the last one that you mm -hmm. you just mentioned example so, for example, impending um, something. So, God has uh, a doctor has diagnosed somebody of uh, a very serious ailment mm -hmm. or disease, and the person, I mean, maybe the doctor has even said that you are you you'll be dying in about <laughs> three months or in a month or in about six months, yeah. or even if the doc doctor does not say it directly, mm -hmm. you yourself know that this kind of disease here, yeah, I'm not going to survive yeah. it. W why? How do you deal with that? I used to. Can you still not be afraid of such a thing? All right, thank you very much. The situation on the ground warrants that the person should be afraid. But the person needs to come from the understanding that there is a God in heaven who can make an impossible situation to become possible. There is a God who can reverse the irreversible situation. So it's at that point that the, such a person puts an absolute trust and commitment in God that irrespective of the report of the doctor, the Bible says, whose report will you believe? Mm -hmm. So it is at that point you put your trust 
in God and also bring to mind what God has done for you in the past, the testimonies of the past. Like David said when he was going to confront Goliath, everybody was afraid, including Saul. But David said, the same God would deliver me from the pew of the lion, from the pew of the bear. That same God would deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And you know how the story ended. So when you have absolute trust, absolute commitment with uh, uh, commitment to God, irrespective of the situation, God can intervene and reverse an irreversible situation. Wow, <laughs> that's a very powerful one. Um, uh, Fro, before we go for our first break, um, you, you said it's a shield also. Um, fear is also a, a shield. Does it mean it's a good thing we should entertain? No, the fear is not a good thing to entertain. But then, like, just like I said earlier, it could still be like a shield because then mm. you know when a threat is coming. Mm. So this person was diagnosed, like a pastor just said right now, mm -hmm. and then he, he or she knows that this kind of sickness or, or disease could lead to death. Even without being told, it could lead to death. So now, that fear gives you an idea of what to do. Should I stop smoking? Should I stop drinking alcohol? Because a doctor has just said that my liver is rot rotting down there. So this, the fear of knowing the liver is rotting down there, you, then you take a shield. I need to stop doing this because you fear something. You fear death. You fear to want to lose your life. So you take a shield from there because there is a fear. Because if you weren't told about any negative impact of what you're going through, you wouldn't want to take the steps of stopping the bad things that will lead to you dying anyway. So that's why I come in as a shield. And we need to also remember that the, the, the devil went to God and told God that you've built a hedge around Job. So that is why he feared you. So that's, so for me there, I see even the devil do not give fear. The devil did not impose the spirit of fear on man because if he did, then he would have expected a man that fears to fear him. But Job did not fear him. Job feared God rather. And he said, why don't you just take your hand off him and let's see if he will still fear you as he, as he, he does right now. So God did whatever he has to do. T took his hand off Job, all the, the hedge he built around Job, took it off and then warned the devil never to touch his soul. Then Job said, what I feared so much has come upon me. That wasn't, that wasn't devil there dealing with Job. That was God carrying Job through a trial to prove him, if indeed you so much love me, either from the things I'm giving to you, or you would still love me if I took my hand and those materials off you. So, that, so there is still fear there. So it's okay to have fear, but just that you need to understand how to manage fear. Fear is triggered, scientifically speaking, fear is triggered from our brain, our mind. You see something you are afraid of, it that's you, that is on you. So it's like a defense, like I said, but how you are able to, how you are able to accommodate the idea of knowing I'm afraid, what should I do? Should I call the police? Can I fight this battle myself? That's where you need to understand how to accommodate it and also how to fight it yourself. But then, like you said, a Christian, a believer needs to go into prayer. But no matter how much time you go into prayer, you need to still understand. You need an action. You also need to do something there. If you're praying for God to, to ease you off this fear, the spirit of fear that you're praying about, what about you? What are you doing? Are you also doing something to get off that aspect of you fearing? Or you just expect the Holy Spirit to come upon you and help you fight that battle? Holy Spirit is not going to come upon you and help you fight that battle. It's only going to empower you to enable you get rid of that negative impact of fear. Mm. This is Christian Connect on ETV Ghana. It's been very, very interesting. And just for your information before I go for the break, the good news is that Christian Connect is now repeated on uh, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Wednesdays at 10 a.m. So um, you can always catch uh, up. And also, is, we are also live on Facebook as well. Let us take our scripture of the day and we'll be back to continue. This is Christian Connect on ETV Ghana, and today we are looking at how to overcome um, fear. And um, Kelvin, um, you, before the break, you talked about the fact that God gave 
um, what, what was happening to Job, yeah. it appears God gave him that fear. Because uh, I think he said uh, what he feared had come upon him or something. Yes. Yeah, so are you saying God sometimes put us to afraid? Uh, to, uh, uh, to, to make us, no. To, to make us afraid? No. Uh, Job feared God, which is a good fear. Mm -hmm. It's like fearing a father. A yeah. child fear his own father uh, out of respect. Mm -hmm. We all fear our, our, our parents out of respect mm -hmm. without even telling them we fear them. But our parents could feel that sense of fear, of respect. You're, you're, you're playing a game which you know you shouldn't do at that moment and you, you heard your dad coming in. You quickly want to do something just to show you are not doing what you were doing. Mm -hmm. That's fear but out of respect. That was what uh, Job had for, for God. Mm -hmm. And then what, what Job feared most about God, fearing God, was that acknowledgement of knowing this is the Almighty. These are sovereign, these are God, these are King. And if he's hungry, he's hungry would not be good. His anger would not be good. So Job feared in that aspect. But fearing in that aspect is not in a negative part of saying God is wicked. God is not wicked. But then a man would definitely fear. If the first man feared, Adam feared. He was naked. And then God, God came into the garden and asked, Isaac, where are you? And he said, I'm afraid. So I hid myself. Why are you afraid, Adam? I never gave you the spirit of fear. So now God saying, I never gave you the spirit of fear was because there was nothing called spirit of fear. Because if there was in the, if there was a spirit of fear in the plan of God, he would have given it to man. So he never gave that to man. But it is upon a man as a defense, like I said. So Job did not fear God as a wicked God. He feared God in a in, in level of respect, honoring God. This is my king, and I have to respect and obey him. So I fear him due to the things he could do if he's angry. That's mm. kind of fear Job had for God. Wow. Uh, Pastor Blessing, um, let's look at um, these days. I know you deal with the youth a lot and uh, um, you inspire them to do a lot of things. So um, one of the things that we are being encouraged uh, to do is to have our own businesses, uh, to not sit at our comfort zones and do a whole lot of other things. But there are a lot of um, fears out there, let me put it that way, like, should I quit my job and start something? What if it doesn't go well? How do we deal with such fears? Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> the, when, the when you want to make an attempt to, uh, uh, attempt to do something great, it is normal for you to experience some form of fear. But somebody said, courage is not the absence of fear, but your ability to take steps, to do what you have to do, despite that the fear that is confronting you. So when you have a plan, you have a goal that this is what I want to do, I want to set up a business, I want to do this, I want to do that, it is important for you to commit it to God and commit it to God in prayers and put plans in place. When you put plans in place and you take the necessary step you have to do, go for it, irrespective of the fear that is confronting you. Somebody said, uh, what if you fail? What if you fail? That is the fear that always prevents people from doing what they have to do. If you say, what if you the next question you should also tell yourself is, what if it succeeds? The people who succeeded today, they also faced the same fear, but they chose to move. They chose to make progress despite the fear, and that's why we celebrate them today. They are successful. So if you don't make attempts, not taking a risk itself is risky. So when there is something you have in mind to do, please take the step and go for it, and God will help you to achieve it. Mm -hmm. God will help you achieve that, but mm -hmm. let's look at the, the, the processes, like you're saying, maybe you've prayed, you still have direction that you, you should do or take a certain um, step, mm -hmm. and you know that if I do, uh, maybe I will not be able to even find food to eat or do this or that. So will it be wise for you to still go ahead and say, okay, I'm confronting my fear, I'm not afraid, so let, let me just do it, take a step. 
Yes, it, it's important. You know, that is why uh, the Bible encourages us that we should not be anxious for anything. Don't be anxious that, how am I going to do it? How am I going to survive? What will I eat? What will I put on as a cloth? He said, your heavenly father, he knows that you have needs of them. And that is when you need to trust God. You need to believe him that if he can provide for the bed of the hair, as a human being that is created in his image, he will do create, provide it for you. So don't entertain any form of fear. When there is a dream that God is laying in your heart, go for it, overcome the fear, and you can do it. Hmm. Uh, uh, Kelvin, uh, Pastor Kelvin, you, you also mentioned about uh, fear being um, defense and maybe it urges you on yeah. to do something. Yeah. So now let's look at um, um, maybe somebody who is not having a job. Yes. The person has applied several times. The person yes. is not getting uh, the, the, the job now. The person is afraid of the future for the, his, him or herself, her children, and what is actually going to happen to the person. The person is just about to be evicted from his or her home. How do you deal with such fears? So sure. I think uh, for first thing we need to understand that a lot of people are even afraid without even realizing they are afraid in the first place. Mm. You need to acknowledge you fear something. Because you need to fear something in order for you to find solutions to what you fear for. You can look for a solution for what you're not afraid for. Or neither will you go for uh, a malaria medicine when you don't even have malaria in the first place. First thing we need to understand are the kind of uh, messages we bring into our life, what we accommodate into our lives. Social media these days plays a negative role, impact in our lives. And uh, globalization, the war in Ukraine, the war there, you know, economic crisis causes fear in our lives as well. So for a man who has a family and going for a job and he's been evicted from his home, and knowing what it takes, knowing what would happen if the landlord possibly give him a three months and he doesn't have the money, mm -hmm. has to go to court, knows all this process, or he already knows all this. So already there is a hedge of fear in his mind. In his mind already, there's a hedge of fear there. These things happening around him already bringing fear to him. But what he needs to do at a, in that moment is for him to stand strong and believe in himself. The Bible said that if only you can believe. So, so when you believe in your fear, you believe in the problem, you're not believing in finding a possibility, way out from that problem, then you are hedging, you are giving energy, giving power to what you believe in. You can't believe fear and still want solutions to come, to, to, to come knocking at your door. You need, to choose, you need to choose one master. Is it that you believe in a negative impact of what is happening around you, or you go for the point which would cost you some, which would cost you some energy? You need to be strong in that aspect. It's like fighting a war, fighting a battle. Not everyone on a battlefield is actually fighting a battle. Some of us sit at home and we are fighting our own battles, like people would say, fighting your own demons too as well. So what do you do at that moment? You need to take steps, be joyful. Like our pastor says, be joyful, believe in the Lord, pray about it. But not just prayer about it. Some, some, of, some of our believers today keep praying without taking actions. You're praying about it, telling God the whole situations around you, but then taking steps towards those things you are praying about, which I believe God himself, who is our sovereign union, would come forth for you and help you in that situation. But then the Bible said, you, we, need to always, we need to always hold God to his word. He said, if only you can believe. So what do you believe on? Do you believe in the problem or you believe in Jesus Christ who can take you out of that situation? And you have to always prove to God you believe in him by, by keeping knocking on that door. Keep knocking on the door. Keep knocking on the door. Keep asking him for the solution. And he will definitely lay them down for you. Wow. <laughs> that, that's a very powerful one. So um, it means that th there are a lot of things that one ought to do as well in terms of waiting. I, I don't know what you think, Pastor Blessing, because uh, God himself says, uh, fear not. And most of the times, uh, the, the, the little that I have read in the Bible, he says, because I am with you, yeah. because I go with you. Yeah. So you don't have to be uh, yeah, afraid. Okay. So if God goes with me and um, I'm faced with a certain situation, I mean, don't I just have to live in the hands of God so that he takes it over and do whatever he wants to do with it? Because after all, uh, as the Bible also says, my future is in his hands. Yes. Yes. Yes, um, like you rightly said, like you rightly said, 
many people are ignorant or they are not conscious of the fact that the presence of God was with them. Moses had this conscious. He said, we are not going to move an inch if your presence will not go with because he understood the impact the presence of God can make in their journey. Yeah. But a lot of people are not conscious of the fact that God is with them. Can you imagine God being with you and you sit in a car and the driver is moving like this and you're afraid that you're about to crash. But somebody who has a consciousness that I carry the Holy Ghost in my inside, that I cannot sit in the car with God and this, guy, this car will crash or have an accident. There's a kind of confidence. There's a a kind of rest and assurance because you know that God is with you. So that assurance many believers don't have it these days. And that's why any little things they are afraid. They're afraid yeah. But when you have that consciousness, that is the consciousness and the confidence that David had. David was just a small boy. But he was confronting a giant, a Goliath, that is threatening the whole of Israel. That even Saul, with all his experience and his authority, he was he, 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 he hit himself somewhere. Mm -hmm. But David said, no, I'm going to go against this guy. And I will make sure I kill him. I break down his head because he is an uncircumcised Philistine. I have a personal, intimate relationship with God. And God is with me. And the same God who delivered me from the pew of the lion and from the pew of the bear, that same God will deliver this Philistine out of my hand. And so that confidence is what helped David to be able to overcome and kill Goliath. So no matter the challenges that is causing you fear, have the assurance that God is with you. And if God is with you, this is your hand in a positive way. And, and so to quickly add up to what Pastor just said right now, he, he mentioned two names in the Bible. Bible, Moses, he said, I'm not going to take a step unless your presence is with us. So the possibility of God's presence not being with you is there. And David also said that you can take everything away from me, but do not take my spirit. Yeah. So the possibility of God taking his spirit away from a man is also there. So two things here. So as a man, you need to search yourself deep down. What God do you acknowledge? What God do you serve? Because you can't expect goodies from God through Jesus when you don't even acknowledge him or serve him what are your what are you what do you stand for what are your faith in God because you can't say you can't be the you can't be the goody goody Christian you know you come when you need something and then you go back to the world and spend the thing with the world and come back when you need something. Oh, but prodigal son, so he always welcome you back. <laughs> yeah, and after he all when he came you. back, there was a party. Yes. There, there was a party. <laughs> there was a party. Yes, yeah, a great one. But then remember, when the prodigal son left, he was left alone. Oh, the God was with him. We understood God was with him in the spirit. But then let's come to the physical part of the prodigal son. He suffered there. He left. He was alone in his suffering until he reconciled in his own mind and accepted to come back home to the Father. That was where the old goodies is at the Father. If you understand what I'm saying here. Mm. He left. He was there alone. So he can't be like the prodigal son who, who, who is so smart, comes home, enjoy the, enjoy the goodies, go back to the world, suffer there, and come back here and enjoy the goodies. Well, let's thank God for Jesus Christ. He's died for our sin, and we're all even much better than the prodigal son today. But you still cannot be the goody-goody Christian. You need to know where your stand is in the Lord. It's not just about you being religious and going to church each and every day. It's, it is your stand in God. God, Jesus told the woman of the Samaria that you don't need to go to the mountain to seek me. I'm right here in your heart. So as a Christian or a believer or whoever is watching us right now, you need to understand that your heart is where God is. So don't be like the, don't be like the, like a smart person whom, whom whenever they fear something, they want to call upon God. And when God take you out of that situation, even to give a testimony, to tell somebody, to mention that name and acknowledge that glory to God is hard for you. And you expect God to keep helping you in your situation. God does not work that way. You need to always acknowledge God wherever he do something for you. Acknowledge him. God, God blesses those he can trust. And he would give things that, that he knows you can manage to you. So if you're there, you fear to possibly travel abroad. You fear. You fear of the visa. You, you feel when you get to the embassy, you might get rejected. You fear. One thing you need to first be sure in your heart, what are you going there to do? Are you going there in representing God in whatever aspect of life, whatever you do? You don't need to be a pastor to travel abroad, whatever you do. But is it going to benefit those around you? Are you going to use it to, 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 to improve the work of God? 
you know, you know, helping those you're living back home. Because if you don't have any positive reasons of why you want to travel abroad, then that fear will continue to hit you up that the visa will definitely get rejected. Mm -hmm. But uh, Pastor Blessing, how about those who have stayed under the uh, canopy of God eh, or in the presence of God and yet they still can't find what uh, they want and they, they feel or it appears I'm growing. It appears time is going. So I'm growing old. I'm not doing this. I've not been able to do that. I've not doing that. But he thinks that he's he's with God. He's been praying to him faithfully. And yet uh, he's not getting what he wants. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think God, God works with us in mysterious ways. Look at the case of Abraham in the Bible. God gave a promise to him at the age of 75. He said, I will bless you. I will make you the father of many nations. And we knew that after God made that statement, Abraham was still barren for several years. But the Bible recorded that he staggered not with the promises of God. He was not in unbelief. He, he kept on believing, having an assurance that if God has said this thing, definitely it will come to pass, even though he made it uh, as one or two mistakes along the line. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says he staggered not on the promises of God. You understand? So anybody who is uh, in a re re personal intimate relationship with God and is going through challenges, is praying, is believing God for something. And but that particular thing is yet to manifest. Such a person just need to believe in the integrity of God and continue to trust God that if God has said it, it will surely come to him. And it will happen in his own time, not when we want it to happen. Mm. Very interesting one. I, 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 Fru, I wanted to ask you earlier about an example that um, Pastor Blessing uh, gave in which you also kind of um, supported about the car issue. That I sit in this car is moving in a certain way. The Spirit of God is in me. Do I need to be afraid? I don't have to be afraid. But it appears you usually talk about taking action. Is it not that you should get out of the car? Or you think you should continue knowing that God lives in you, so it's not going to have, you are not going to have an accident. That's why you need to. <laughs> 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 that one is a bit tough one. But then, Can I come? Oh. But, but, but then, yeah. where in, in terms of action, in terms of action, if you realize that the car you are sitting in is about to either hit a loop or and, and you should know in the present moment, you should know what you need to do. If you have to get out of that car and pick a different car, that does not mean you're not a believer. You know, sometimes we try to want to, you know, face every challenges because we are believers. There are certain challenges you have to flee from. Mm -hmm. that, is a, that, that is one of the senses God has given to us. You have to flee from it. You don't have to always want to fight every battle because you are a believer or a Christian. Mm. If you feel the car is not, is doing and about to hit you, you can get out from it and pick a new car. But if you believe. It means you are afraid and you don't believe. It, it, that does not mean you are afraid. That has been, that has been smart. That has been smart. And which, which every believer should also be. That's if you get out from the car. You are smart, as in God lives in you, and you, you, you are being smart? Yes, God. God because you, you, you don't believe in God or no, something? No, God, God lives in you. So you're, being, you're being, not being smart as a physical smart, but knowing the God you have, not every battle we have to fight as a Christian. Not mm -hmm. every battle. The Bible said the battle is a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, uh, Pastor Blessing, you wanted to ask something yes, to that. Yes, thank you very much. I just want to bring a scenario of uh, the children of Israel when we, they are confronted with the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. You know, listen to the statement that Moses gave to them. He said, be still, be still, and okay. see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptian you see today, you will see them again no more. You know, sometimes when you are confronted with a battle, with a challenge that is bringing fear to you, it's at that point you put your absolute trust, absolute commitment, because you, have, you don't have the power of your own to overcome this situation. But unless God step in and, it have, and he said that, be still, be still and see the salvation. And in that moment, God will intervene and the situation will change. This is Christian Connect. Be still and know that I am God, or be still uh, for the Lord will fight um, for you. Let's check on our fact file and we'll be back to continue.
Read Matthew 4, 1 through 11 for yourself. What can we learn about Satan's schemes from this passage of Scripture? How did Jesus deal with tests and temptations? Well, he always started his response with three words. It is written. You see, Jesus always went to the scriptures for his response. Since we all face tests and temptations in life, we all need a basic understanding of the scriptures, God's word. This is a great reason for us to do these Bible studies together. Right after the testing of Jesus in the wilderness, Matthew tells us that Jesus began his preaching, his first words, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Matthew 4, 17. As we've learned, one of the key concepts in the book of Matthew is the kingdom of heaven. What does that really mean? Well, in one sense, it refers to the physical rule of God on earth. How would this be accomplished? Through God's son, Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, one of his prophesied names was Emmanuel, which means God with us. The Messiah would be God in the flesh, reigning on earth. Indeed, the kingdom of heaven was not only near, it was here. This is Christian Connect on ETV Ghana, and we are looking at how to overcome fear. And in case you just join us, remember this show is live on Facebook, so you can always go and watch it again. However, it's also being repeated on Wednesday at 10 a.m., so you can always go um, make sure that you listen to it over and over again so that you, you get to know what we've been talking about. Now, we, we've talked about a lot of scenarios, what fear is, and a, a number of scenarios in which we should not be afraid. Pastor Blessing, let me start with you. How do we then um, overcome fear itself as Christians? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would say that we first of all need to be aware of the danger or the effect that this fear can have in our lives. Mm -hmm. For example, in the Job chapter 3, verse 25, Job said it, he said, that which I greatly fear has come upon me, and the things I was afraid of has happened to me. So anytime you become afraid, most especially negative things, exactly the way you are afraid of it, that is how you experience it. You, be it you are afraid of failure, fear of failure, the person who experienced failure. If you write an exam and immediately you come out of the exam, you are panicked that this exam I didn't do well, I'm going to fail. Surely that person will experience a fear of. There are different kinds of fear. Fear of death. If you are afraid of death, if the spirit of death is tormenting you, are you afraid? It's a matter of time. The person will go. So when you understand that, when you hold on to fear, you allow the spirit of fear to dominate your life. That particular thing you are afraid of, it should only happen to you just like what Job said. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing we also need to know is we need to have the knowledge and the awareness of the presence of God with us. When you know that God is with you, there is a kind of fear you will not entertain. And we also need to have an awareness of the love of God. And that is why the Bible says, in 2 uh, Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of power the spirit of love and of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. So we need to become aware of the love of God and the power of God that is at work in our life and the sound mind. And these are things we need to become aware of. And when fear is coming to paralyze us, that consciousness will give us strength. And that's why Moses said to Joshua, he said, be strong and be courageous because the challenges you are going to face is going to intimidate, it's going to bring fear, but when you are strong and you are courageous, you can be able to move and do whatever you have to do. Then the last but not the least, before I allow my partner to come in, is that you need to bring to mind the testimonies of the past, the things that God has done in your life in the past. When you remember, that's why Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, he said, we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony. So our, the words of our testimony is a major weapon 
by which we can use to fight first. So if God can deliver you yesterday, that same God has not changed and it will deliver you today. Mm. Thank you very much. Talking about the awareness of uh, God and his love, and it reminds me of, I think, First John chapter 4, verse 18 or so, yeah. perfect love uh, casts cast out uh, fear. fear. Mm -hmm. So um, what, um, uh, Fru, what do you think uh, that, um, uh, we've already mentioned some of the causes of, mm -hmm. of fear, yeah. but why do sometimes people become afraid of what sometimes does not even exist? It's the fear itself. That's <laughs> fear itself. Right. It, being afraid of what does not even exist is fear itself, mm. you know, which you are allowed, you are allowed it yourself. You know, when you are, when you're watching, if you're watching us right now and there are things you, you, you fear and, and you want to put that on someone, want to put that blame on, on someone, either possibly or somebody going through a crisis in their marriage right now and they fear divorce, they fear divorce. And because you fear divorce, you prefer to die in that marriage because you fear divorce. You don't need to fear divorce. Instead of you fearing divorce, fear not, not having a conversation with your partner. Sit your partner down. Have good conversation with them. Let them understand what you're going through. Instead of you allowing your energy to pour on the fear of divorce, because whatever you put your energy on, it grows. It receives spirit and keep growing. So putting your fear there, thinking you don't want to divorce, you don't want to divorce, you're, you're afraid of divorce, one day will definitely come to pass because that's what you fear most. Job said it, what, I've, what I fear so much have come upon me. So the more we fear one particular thing, the more that thing becomes a master of our lives. So you don't have to pour, so instead of you believing on that and pouring your energy on that particular aspect, why don't you shift your energy into something positive? Like Pastor says, think positive. Remember the testimonies God has won given to you. And for a man to be alive, for you to see, to see the day, the day of the, the, the day of light or light of the day, then you know God is with you. There is a saying that who is dead, it's, it's hopeless. But for as long as you are alive, there is hope. And you need to believe in God that gives you that hope. You can't do it on your own. Sometimes we try to fight our fears on our own, trying to, you know, you fear something and you're taking drastic decision by, you know, calling somebody you think could help you, you know, you know, doing things on your own. No, the first person you have to run to is God and ask him why you have this fear in you. And then ask him to help you take that fear away. There's something I wrote down. Face your fear in patience. Don't rush it. There's something you fear. Don't rush it. Don't be too drastic about trying to call somebody, either a pastor or whatever. Face it on your own, in patience, strategize. Think about what you really fear. Is it worth it? Why do I fear this? How did it start? Because there is, a, there is an acknowledgement of when, when, you should know when it started. Mm. You should know, how did it start? How did I get here? Now flash back, try to bring yourself out from it and trying to fight that fear yourself. The only thing I believe in my opinion, you should be praying to God is strength to fight out of that, to, to bring you out of that fear, that thing you fear so much, strength. That was what Job was praying for, strength, strength, okay. strength, strength, until God actually one day came true for him. So the only thing we can ever pray for is strength. Remember, patience is a virtue. Mm. Whatever you fear, handle it with a heart filled with joy. While you're handling it, be joyful, be happy. Be, be, be gracious. Right. Remember what God has once done for you. Mm -hmm. A lot of us usually quickly deny God because of the little thing he didn't do for us. Mm -hmm. And we tend to forget the big things he's once done in our life. Yeah, yeah. Let's always remember the little things. Even having voice to be able to even call upon God is enough to say, God, I know you are with me in this battle. Yeah. And, and, and then, and then, the, the, and then mm -hmm. the visualize sources. Visualize sources. See yourself as a winner. Celebrate each time something something bad is about to happen. Celebrate. Don't just you know. Don't let it overwhelm you. Don't 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 allow the negative impact of the fear to overwhelm you. Celebrate jack your life out of it. Mm -hmm. That's why you are a believer. That's why we have God for God crying out loud, mm -hmm. and He's always there to straighten us. Right. Right. Okay, thank you so much, uh, um, uh, Pastor Kelvin Fro. Um, my director says he's afraid we may overrun. <laughs> so, um, uh, Pastor Blessing, just in some 30 seconds, your final words. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, my final word to our viewers is don't entertain fear. 
Fear is not of God. God loves you and he has the best plan for you. Be strong in the Lord. Becomes aware that his presence with you everywhere you go. And that thing you are afraid about, that is exactly what you should do. And I will see you at the top in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. That's Pastor Blessing Asun Ligon. I hope I get the name right. Yes. He's the vice president of the Floodgate chapter of the Full Gospel uh, Business Men's uh, Ministry. And then um, um, he is also the founder of Agent of Change. And Pastor Kelvin uh, Fro, and he is the, uh, I don't know whether founder, but he For does the, the Fro podcast. podcast. Yes, the Fro podcast. Thank you all both so much. And beloved out there, as we've said, fear not, fear not, fear not, for the Lord is with you. And the quotation I gave earlier when we were starting, it says, uh, nothing is too difficult for God. So whatever situation you find yourself, take it to God and do not be afraid, for he is with you. Thank you so much for being part of today's show. My name is Paul Anamakori, and God bless for being here with us. Thank you.